Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Dave's Faves, number 117 to be exact. And today I want to talk to you about Manuel de Falla, the three-cornered hat, El Sombrero de Tres Picos. Boy, do I love this music. You know, Falla wrote very little music, or he wrote the same music many times. This is one of those. It originated as a as a work for chamber orchestra, missing the final chota, whatever that last fandango, whatever that concluding dance is. Wait a minute here, though. It's a chota. It's a chota. Da, 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 the stuff I like always winds up on the floor as did this. But, you know, it, 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 the thing about Faya's music is that it is written with, first of all, unbelievable melodic, um, you know, he, he just had that whole Spanish tune thing just down to a T. It has the most beautiful melodic content. It's exquisite. It really is. And the orchestration and the finish, the polish is perfect. Every single note is necessary. Every tiny little phrase is crystal clear. It's all been sanded down and brushed to an unbelievable sheen. It's exquisite. There isn't anything he wrote which is not in its way practically a masterpiece. And there's only, what, maybe a dozen, a dozen and a half works in total. Tiny little things. I mean, tiny little number of things. There's La Vida Breve. There's El Amor Brujo. There's this thing. There's the Fantasia, Fantasia Betica. There's there are, you know, a couple, couple of Master Peter's puppet show. There, there are a few things, right? I mean, you could, maybe you could come up with a dozen. But my God, every single one of them matters. Every single one of them is a landmark in the history of Spanish music. I mean, the, 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 four, the four Spanish folk songs, the four, whatever they're called, Cantos Populares Españoles, you know, with the, Ay, guardo una pena en mi pecho, ay, you know, they're just, they're just amazing. They're amazing works. That, that, that little set alone has been arranged 400 times. His stuff has been arranged for piano, for guitar, for orchestra, because the tunes are so amazing. Absolutely amazing, and it's it's exceptional stuff. I just think it, it's captivating. It, it pulls you in and gets under your skin, and once you've been bitten, you never recover. It's that simple, and I just love The Three-Quartered Hat. It's his largest sort of non-vocal theatrical work after the opera La Vida Breve, and the original the original performance was conducted by no long no no longer no less pardon me he's also no longer no less than Ernest Ansermé and his recording on Decca is absolutely fabulous in fact I think I have it sitting right over here hang on this is handy being in the overflow this is this is the F's some of the F's right there it is voila. But that is not my fave. That is not, it's a very great performance. In fact, when I did the video on the three-quarter hat, I think that was my however choice because it really is a fabulous performance and brilliant stereo and very well played. But this is the one that I reach for, the one that I go to. And I just want to hear the piece because I love it so much. And and I can just listen to it and wallow in its, its succulent melodies and amazingly pointed instrumentation. I mean, do you realize if you actually have seen the ballet performed, the whole thing, um, as an orchestral work, there are no trombones, for example, until that final jota. You know, the, the, the full orchestra is used so sparingly. In fact, I think he only uses two horns all the way up to that point. You don't miss them. You don't miss anything. It's just that the piece is planned <laughs> to the most extraordinary degree. So the performance that I just I just adore and that I love and play most frequently, probably, all things considered, is this one. Jesus Lopez Cobos with the Cincinnati Symphony on Telarc. And I'll be quite frank about the reason. It's the sound. I just want to hear the most beautiful, rich, detailed, impactful sonics that I can in this work because it just makes all the difference to me. And I, I can appreciate, my goodness, I can appreciate and love 
many other versions. I've talked about the ones on Chandos, and like I said, I just said Ulcer May, and there's a really good one with the LSO at George Schwartz that was on Delos, and I don't know where it is now, and it's just lots of good versions of this piece. There's Frubeck de Borgos, who's fabulous on EMI, and those are well recorded too. They sound very good. No one's going to be upset with them. Certainly not. I mean, you can see them in my, my repertoire video, but for me, the one that just gives me the most pleasure to just play all the way through and revel in it is this one, because my God, it sounds amazing. I'm not sure if it's still available either now, given what's going on with Telarc, but this is an absolutely fabulous performance. Lopez Cobos is a conductor who I think deserves a lot more credit than he usually gets. He was a gentleman. He's an elegant conductor. I've said that before. He was He's a perfectly suited personality for this music, for its mixture of passion and precision. It's really, really special, I think, to hear him play this music. And so there you go. That's Dave's Faves, my choice for El Amor Brujo. Keep on listening, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me.